Is Charles Leclerc even worth $50 million? According to the Italian outlet Gazzetta, Ferrari is set to pay Charles Leclerc up to $50 million a year to race for Ferrari through the 2029 season, extending his current deal an additional five years. His current contract runs out at the end of 2024, and they would like to make Charles essentially a Ferrari lifer, if we're being completely honest. That will take him up to a decade of service to the Scuderia, and then at this point, it's been a very tumultuous relationship, if we're being completely honest. Charles and the team have had the speed to win more than the five races that they've won together, and they continually find new ways to lose them. Whether it's the hydraulics failing, Charles putting it into the wall, Ferrari forgetting which tires to bring out to the car, sending him out on the grid with a broken gearbox, or the pit wall strategy just having absolutely no idea what they're doing out there. And Charles can only do so much in the cockpit where he's deciding strategy himself, just like we saw at Abu Dhabi to end the season. Ferrari just continues to underdeliver. They overpromise, they underdeliver, and then they go back on that overpromise and they're like, actually, we, we never really meant to contend this year. Our goal was to contend, but then at the end of the year, we decided we didn't want to contend anymore. And it's just the same story over and over again. And Ferrari has not won a world driver's title since 2007 with Kimi Raikkonen. And if you're keeping count, it's a long time. There are kids that can now legally drive that were just born back then. It's insane when you honestly think about it that they've gone this long without winning a title. And honestly, they had a chance to win one with Fernando Alonso when he was with the team and they did Ferrari things and completely bungled that and handed it over and continued to allow Red Bull to win championships. But when it comes down to Ferrari, they just continue to find new ways to lose. And maybe that's why they're going to pay Charles as much money. I mean, we're talking about Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton levels of money. $50 million a year by the time his contract runs out in 2029 is insane for a guy that's never won a world driver's title, never even contended for a world championship either, which is really the part where I'm like, oh man, this is a lot of money for a guy that you get the same level of production out of is essentially like... Well, it's hard to really dictate who's winning races right now because Red Bull's doing just that. But it is hard to justify spending even the $25 million they're currently spending on them. And this is kind of, in my opinion, Ferrari doing one of two things here. The funny route of overpaying him so that he'll put up with the pain that is driving for Ferrari. Or the fact that they're willing to overpay for him. And, and have everybody, uh, you know, consider him to be a top-level talent. And don't get me wrong, I think Charles is a top-level talent. I think he's a generational talent. Not with Ferrari, though. He continues to make too many mistakes. One, because he's mistake-prone, in a sense. But he also has, to, also has to overdrive this car year in and year out, which leads to mistakes. And then on top of that, he has to deal with Ferrari and the pain that is that car breaking down more often than it should, and also having to deal with the pit wall as well, who continue to have absolutely zero idea what they want to do strategy-wise. The day Ferrari outsmarts another team on strategy would be revolutionary. It would be unheard of. I mean, we haven't seen Ferrari do that since 2007, if we're being completely honest. Eh, there's a time in 2012 maybe even 2013, where they definitely did that. But it's been a long time. It's been a decade since they've really outsmarted uh, another team, at least on strategy. So, yeah, it, it'll be hard to, to or it'll be fun to see that happen. I doubt it ever will happen. But for Charles, maybe Ferrari's willing to overpay him too because he's doing the job of a race strategist. And that's now kind of come down to what they have to do. We saw Sebastian Vettel do it when he was a Ferrari. He was calling strategy from the cockpit. We've seen Charles do it now, where he's calling strategy from the cockpit. They should not be doing that. There's absolutely no reason the driver should be thinking further ahead in the strategy than what the race strategist is doing. Abu Dhabi was, again, a perfect example of that, where Charles threw out the idea of like, hey, why don't I just go ahead and let uh, Perez pass, knowing that he has a five-second penalty? And they're like, oh, yeah, that is a good idea. Why didn't you think of that in the first place? So Ferrari looks set to extend Charles for another five years. And for being completely honest, where is he going to go, right? Ferrari is at least a top four teams more often than not. I see some people being like, oh, they're a top two or top three team. True, but like as Mercedes and McLaren continue to progress as the season went on, I mean, there's a reason Mercedes took second in the Constructors title. It's because they're just 
better than what Ferrari is. And if McLaren didn't have such a slow start to the year, they likely finished third in the Constructors' title, and Ferrari finds himself maybe in fourth, despite having won a race this year, the only non-Red Bull car to win a race. So, you know... It kind of goes back and forth, and for Charles, there's nowhere else to go, right? Uh, he's not he's not going to Mercedes. They seem to have a pretty decent driver lineup with with George for the future and some driver development uh, drivers in development in the pipeline that they can go after as well. McLaren is still not at the point where I think they can really warrant spending that money on Charles and why he would jump over there right now makes no sense because he's at least in a car that's capable of winning races and we haven't seen the McLaren do that on speed yet. Of course, Red Bull's not going to take him, although, you know, a Charles Leclerc, Max Verstappen lineup would be absolutely unheard of. They're not going to do that either. Aston Martin was rumored back in the summer to be making a run at him. Again, hasn't really shown the race winning speed that they had at the beginning of the year. And that wasn't really even truly race winning speed. It was just second place speed in all honesty. So staying with Ferrari kind of makes the most sense. What's the future of the team look like in terms of his teammate? Well, Carlos Sainz deal also runs out at the end of 2024. He would like a two-year deal, which is honestly the approach that most drivers used to take back in the day. Nobody was ever signing these long-term deals, five, six-year deals that we see some drivers signing now. Typically, drivers sign one to three-year deals at the most. That way, they can bounce around when they need to. And granted, Fernando Alonso was signed to Ferrari through 2017 and that on paper, and we saw how that ended. I mean, even Sebastian Vettel was signed for her Red Bull for an additional year, and he was able to get out of that. So contracts are literally just pieces of paper or a DocuSign document at this point that can easily be changed and torn up if they want to be. So it's not saying that Charles will be there forever, and he does apparently have a performance out after the 2027 season. But in terms of Carlos, his deal's up at the end of 2024. He would like a two-year deal. Ferrari wants to give him a one-year deal for just 2025, which... Makes a little bit of sense because Ferrari is weary of Carlos jumping over to the new Sauber Audi uh, program that will be starting up in 2026. He, of course, has a strong relationship with the guy that's leading that project now, Andreas Seidel, from their days at McLaren. His dad, Carlos Sainz Sr., also has really strong Audi ties as well through his rallying. And there's a lot of things that kind of link him together. If he doesn't end up over there, also some indications are that he could possibly head back to McLaren or he could even be an option at Red Bull. I don't see him really being an option at Red Bull, although he was a part of that family as well. He's kind of taken this, <laughs> a lot of the same career path as, as Fernando Alonso, which is kind of odd, other than the, the Red Bull portion of it. But Carlos going over there, eh, it seems weird. It just still seems like he'll end up at Audi. So Carlos would like a two-year deal. They would like a one-year deal. I see Charles Leclerc fans all in the comments on everything being like, we got to get Carlos out of here. He's not a team player, this and that. He doesn't think what's, he doesn't do what's best for the team. Hey, listen, at the end of the day, he at least has the most recent win for Ferrari and two of the three most recent wins for the team as well. So yeah, he might put himself first, but this is Formula One. You got to be selfish from time to time, especially when you're not contending for a world championship on the constructor side or even the driver's side. Go out there and win a race for, for Carlos. So that's what's happening. $50 million, though, is absolutely crazy for Charles Leclerc. Again, a guy that has not won a world championship. So let me know in the comments, do you agree with this contract? Do you not agree with the contract? I mean, I am not a Ferrari guy. I kind of just wore this to pretend to be a Ferrari guy. I do at least have the Ferrari Technic Lego. Not too many people have those still. The stickers are grinding off of it. I'd like to see Ferrari be competent, win races. I just have zero faith in them actually doing it. It's more fun when Ferrari's good, right? It's like college football. College football's more fun when, like, Notre Dame or USC or somebody's contending. It's more fun to make fun of them. But every now and then, you're like, ah, oh, nice. it'd be nice to see a blue blood kind of get back in there, mix things up a little bit. And then you're like, oh, yeah, I still enjoy watching them find new ways to lose every single time. So like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok, at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter, at Break Hard Blog.